but we as a society tend to glorify war a bit too much sometimes. And when you use terms like last stand or hold this position at all costs, I feel like we forget what those phrases truly mean. Put yourself in a unit that's told I need you to hold this position at all costs. And think about you and everyone in that unit is probably going to become a casualty. Um, think about how terrifying that would be. Think about what's going through the individual soldier's mind. Well, we're here at Gettysburg, and when you hear last stand uh, and hold this position at all costs, you immediately think about the 20th Maine on Little Round Top. And rightfully so, it's a highly publicized area of the battlefield. Well, we're going to be covering a different Maine regiment today, the 16th Maine, and we're going to uh, follow their footsteps here on Oak Ridge on the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg, and we're going to see just how their actions possibly saved a huge bulk of the Union Army here. So, we're here on Oak Ridge which is uh, on the right of the Union line here on day one. And the 16th Maine was part of the 1st Brigade of the 2nd Division under Brigadier General Gabriel R. Paul. And they were with the 13 Massachusetts, the 94th and the 104th New York, along with the 107th Pennsylvania. And they would arrive here around noon uh, along Seminary Ridge. And they would throw up some hasty breastworks there. And around 2 p.m., they would be moved to this position here in Oak Ridge, and this is the line of battle here. You can see the stone markers here. And right now, we are right where the 16th Maine would have been positioned. Now you can see the monuments in the background there. That's where the Confederates would have been positioned, and they would have been attacking from this field in front of us here. So we're going to start on the left flank of the 16th Maine here on July 1st around 1 to 2 p.m. So, this is the left flank marker of the 16th Maine. And to give you some perspective here, the right flank marker is right here, just beyond the 16th Maine uh, monument here. And this would be their position of battle. Now, they would hold off repeated assaults here by the Confederates under command of Major General Robert Rhodes. And in fact, they would hold this position for so long, they found themselves dangerously exposed. The forces on their left flank around McPherson's Ridge begin to fall back around the uh, breastworks that were constructed around the Lutheran Seminary. And the 11 Corps, which was on Barlow's Knoll, was beginning to fall back as well, leaving this position dangerously exposed. So the Union troops along Oak Ridge here would have had a pretty strong position. Most of them would have been fortified behind a stone wall, just like the one we're seeing here. Now I don't know if this was the actual location of the stone wall, or if it was closer to this side. But like we just stated, they were able to hold off repeated Confederate attacks here. Now, one of the attacks took place just before us here. And that attack was led by Brigadier General Alfred Iverson. Now, Iverson didn't really recon this area. And he pretty much sent his men blindly into this area. And unfortunately for his men, they would suffer heavy casualties here on this field before us. So I've worked my way down to where the Confederates would have assaulted from. And this is the Union position from the Confederate perspective here on Oak Ridge. Now this field is the field that Iverson's men, numbering I believe 1,300 North Carolinians, his brigade would advance across this field. And when they were within 100 yards of the Union line here, the Union troops would pop up from behind the stone wall that we just talked about and deliver just absolutely withering volleys into the ranks of the Confederates. And of the 1,300 men in Iverson's brigade, 800 will become casualties within minutes here. There are numerous accounts here stating that the dead North Carolinians here on the field before us were in perfect rank and file, as if they were marching down the street here in a parade. So you can just imagine the uh, devastation that these volleys would have done on Iverson's men here. And back up just a little bit here. And this monument reads, let's see. On the afternoon of July 1st, 1863, the regiment charged to this point, capturing two battle flags and a number of prisoners. And that was an account from the 88th Pennsylvania Volunteers. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty devastating fighting here. So we've made our way down Oak Ridge here, and now we're on the Union right flank. Um, the original 16th main position was just past this marker here. And they were moved to this location here. Now this is the Mummusburg Road. I hope I pronounced that right. But like we stated a little earlier, the 16th Maine and the forces here on Oak Ridge held out for so long that it put them in a pretty precarious situation. Now the forces on the Union right, the 11 Corps at Barlow's Knoll, they would be completely decimated and they were being driven back to town. 
and right there is Gettysburg. And the forces on the left flank here, on McPherson's Ridge, were now being driven back to the seminary. And now those forces were manning the breastworks that were constructed earlier in the day. This position here was uh, pretty exposed on both flanks. Now the overall commander here in Oak Ridge, General Robinson, he would finally sound the retreat. But he would look at Colonel Tilden of the 16th Maine and he would instruct him, I need you to hold this position at all costs. Now upon getting those orders, Colonel Tilden of the 16th Maine would go to his regiment and instruct his officers of the orders he just received. And he would obviously look at his officers and he would explain, quote unquote, you all know what this means. So this regiment was tasked with holding off an overwhelming Confederate force while the rest of the Union Army would retreat back through town, which is just behind you on the camera here. So here is the town of Gettysburg there. You can see some of the buildings in the background. And the Union forces would begin retreating, utilizing the railroad cut that we talked about a little earlier in the series. Now, this is the same railroad cut, but it's a different portion of that railroad cut. So they'd begin retreating back towards town. And the 16th Maine and Colonel Tilden, they would man this area. And they have a monument here. Let's see if we can read it. This position held July 1st, 1863 at four o'clock by the 16th Maine Infantry, 1st Brigade, 2nd Division of the 1st Corps. While the rest of the division was retreating, this regiment having moved from the position on the left under orders to hold this position at any cost. And at this spot, 11 members of the 16th Maine would be killed, another 62 would be wounded, and 159 would be captured out of 275 engaged. Now, out of all of those engaged here, I believe only 35 were able to slip away from this position and head back towards the Union position south of town on Cemetery Ridge. So, the left flank of the 16th Maine would have been right here along the Mummusburg Road. And we're gonna make our way across Double Day Avenue here. And we have the marker that we just read. And we are now coming up on the right flank of the 16th Maine here on Oak Ridge. So this is the spot where the 16th Maine would make their last stand and essentially save thousands of Union soldiers and allow them to fight another day. So we're also going to hop up to the observation tower here and uh, just kind of get a survey of the land here. All right, making our way up these steps here one by one. Don't drop the camera, James. All right, and here we are. Oh my gosh, wow, what a beautiful view. So this field before us, this is where Iverson's brigade would have come across and hit small arms fire here along Oak Ridge. Back here is the town of Gettysburg. Pan to our left here, you have Barlow's Knoll, where the 11 Corps uh, was being decimated by Confederate forces. And man, this is absolutely beautiful up here. So those soldiers who weren't killed or captured or wounded already began to slowly retreat back down this ridge, still fighting and trying to buy as much time for the rest of the Union Army as it could. And when they got to the railroad cut just behind you on the camera here, the remaining members of the 16th Maine knew it was only a matter of time before they were killed, wounded, or captured. Well, in order to avoid disgracing their regiment and their state, the members of the 16th Maine began to tear up their regimental flag and the United States colors. And they began distributing the pieces amongst the survivors uh, here of the 16th Maine. Um, I, I just couldn't imagine uh, after fighting all day and the only thing that was on my mind was not disgracing my regiment. So the soldiers, to deprive the Confederates from capturing their colors, they tore them up and they all hit them uh, amongst the entire regiment. So. That was a very brief story of the brave actions of the 16th Maine here on July 1st of 1863. So next time when you hear terms like the last stand or hold at all costs, think about what's going through those soldiers' minds and just try and put yourself uh, in their shoes just for a little bit. And uh, that's what I tried to do today and I hope that you guys got something from it. So with that being said, we're going to uh, continue our journey to the next site here at the Gettysburg Battlefield.